All right, guys, today on our five minute video, um, this is the second video for today, but let's cover fencing. Okay, depending on what type of animal you're wanting to keep, you're going to need different types of fence or different types of containment. All different types of livestock need different types of containment, but certain types you can keep together on in the same similar type of containment. And I keep saying containment, but I mean things like cages, pens, runs, cages, paddocks, um, pasture, whatever you have them in, they almost always are going to need something that will keep them in their defined area because it's very unlikely that you're going to be living in an area where you just have hundreds and hundreds of acre and they are very unlikely to get off of your land. <laughs> um, no matter what type of animal you have, most likely you're dealing with 20 or less acres, so they they have a confined area that they have to stay on. Things like sheep in the wild move miles every day. Sometimes, you know, depending on where they are, what type of sheep they are. Some are mountain sheep, and they'll just be climbing and moving around these mountains. Um, they don't they don't move, but you know, maybe a quarter of a mile to a half a mile each day. But some of them, like in the desert sheep, they will move miles each day, searching for food and water. Um, so you know, your little quarter of an acre, half an acre, one acre, 10 acres, whatever is nothing for that sheep <laughs> or that goat or that horse or that gal. And I'm sorry, that bird has decided he wants more attention. Um, you can just hear him shouting in the background because I'm not looking at him. <laughs> He's not happy about it. Um, but anyway, back to our topic here. So if you're raising something like quail, you probably need containment. You want them to be comfortable and healthy about one square foot per bird. So for example, if you have 10 quail, your best bet is going to be um, something that equals 10 square feet. So two by five would be 10 square feet. Tommy, that's enough. Something two by five would be 10 square feet. Something three by four would be 12 square feet. Something four by four would be 16 square feet. The square feet, you just multiply the length and the, height and the width. And that usually, unless you're like dealing with a really odd shaped area or you have pieces taken out, that's going to give you your square footage. <laughs> He's just going to keep going for this video, guys. I hope you don't mind. But um, so something like quail need that much space. Uh, something like rabbits. I don't know the exact square footage because it's been a long time since I've looked into it. But they probably need, depending on the size of your rabbit, somewhere between two and five square feet per rabbit. And most of the time, rabbits you want to keep solo. Rabbits do like to move around and they um, need plenty of room to be able to wander around their cage. They usually like having a nest box. They need a nest box if you're going to do any kind of breeding. Um, but they don't absolutely need one if you're not breeding. But if as long as they have enough room that they have the ability to take at least three or four steps that way, three or four steps this way, they're fine. The size I have my rabbits in right now is about 30 inches by about 25 or so. So it's not quite square, but it's pretty good size. They're stacked on top of each other. Each one has a tray. I only have two rabbits. Um, in the other cage, we have a disabled, it's a three tier system. We have a disabled chicken, but um, that's been turned into a pet. But um, for fencing, for bigger animals, um, for sheep, four foot fence is normally fine. For pretty much anything, if you have a really persistent ram, he might get over that four foot fence. Or if you have extremely hungry um, ewes, they might get over that four foot fence. But in the vast majority of cases, four foot is absolutely fine. Now, the spacings on your spacings on your uh, fence, you want to make sure they are big enough that if you have anything with horns, they are going to be able to go in and out or not in at all. Because if you have something that's big enough for them to stick their head in, but they pull it back out and their hand, their horns get stuck, they are um, probably going to die unless you catch it really quick. Because animals, when they get stuck, often will freak out, go into shock, and die. It's fairly sad. Um, but um, usually you're going to be fine with welded wire, which is usually 2 by 4 inches or field fencing for like a horse. But if you, you do not want to do the stranded wires, because usually they, sheep will be able to push those apart. Whereas a horse, if you're doing stranded wires like that, horses aren't going to between those unless you're dealing with miniatures or ponies. 
The goats, on the other hand, you probably want at least five foot or taller unless you're dealing with the dwarf varieties because uh, goats are climbers and they will climb over short fences pretty easily or they'll find something to climb on and jump over those. Sheep aren't near as much of a climber or jumper. Now, there's the old idiom. Sheeps are jumping over the little fence, but that little fence is like two and a half feet tall. That's why they could jump over it pretty easy. Um, but I've got a little over five minutes here, guys. But that covers the majority of the requirements for fencing for um, quail, rabbits, goats, and sheep. If you're dealing with something larger like a cow, you want much more secure fencing because they are really rough on fences. You want tall, at least five foot tall, and you want it to be very strong and very supported because that cow is going to rub and lean on those fences. If you're, dealing, if you're dealing with them, you might want to look into hot wire fencing because hot wire fencing will keep them off the fences and keep other animals out of your pasture. Um, you can also do hot wire netting fencing or stranded fencing for sheep and goats. Some people do it really well. I'm gonna. I'm at six minutes now, guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop there. If you have any other questions about fencing, feel free to shoot them my way. I can cover this again in a long, longer video if you want me to. But I'll see you in the next video. Bye.